Part 2 starts with a malicious soldier chasing Charlie through the woods. When the soldier grips her down, Miles attacks him from behind and subdues him. They then question the soldier about Captain Tom Neville and Danny's whereabouts. After learning that they're headed for Noblesville, Indiana, Miles, Charlie, and Nora head to meet Aaron and Maggie in Lowell. Miles, Charlie, and Nora arrive at Lowell and catch up with Aaron and Maggie. After telling them where they can find Danny, the group starts walking. Suddenly, a pair of dogs attack them. When they try to escape, one of the dogs bites Aaron's leg. Thankfully, Maggie shoots the dog down before it can cause more harm to Aaron. Elsewhere, Tom Neville and his men are on their way to Indiana when Danny informs them that there is a storm coming. In the next scene, we see Rachel who is drawing something in her notebook but quickly covers it when she hears someone come in. It's Monroe and he asks her what Ben was previously working on. When Rachel denies knowing anything about it, Monroe has Sergeant Strasser torture her. Back in Lowell, the group stops by an abandoned amusement park. Maggie is tending to Aaron's wounds when Charlie hears a rustle behind a nearby bush. Meanwhile, Miles confides in Nora that he is planning to leave but Nora thinks he needs to uphold his promise to protect his family. As Charlie overhears their conversation, she flashes to a time when her mother left to scour for supplies and never returned. Meanwhile, Tom and his men hustle inside a barn when a dangerous storm approaches. A soldier ties Danny near a window and tells him not to move. Back with the group, Miles notices someone has been following them. He sneaks up behind and catches Nate. The two fight for a while and when Miles is about to kill Nate, Charlie pleads with him, arguing that he could be useful as he might know about Tom's plans. As the storm grows worse, there is chaos in the barn and Tom's soldiers try to calm the horses. Danny uses this opportunity to escape out the window. Before he can get far enough, Tom catches him and takes him to a nearby cellar to escape a tornado that is right above them. Next, Miles shares his plan to leave with Maggie as well. She too doesn't think it's a good idea. She then tells him about her struggle to get back to their kids. She walked from Washington DC to the East Coast to board a ship to Canada, but to no avail. Eventually, she gave up. She also shares that she almost committed suicide but Ben came along and saved her. Slowly, she fell in love with Ben and his kids. Maggie concludes by saying that they saved her and, if Miles stays behind for Charlie, he would be saved from his past too. The group then gets into a town, where they run into the pack of dogs again. They all escape, but Maggie, unfortunately, gets caught by the dog's master. Maggie struggles and the dog's master stabs her in a leg artery and flees. Miles comes to the rescue and carries her into the restaurant where they are hiding out. While Charlie aids Maggie, Miles, and Nora go onto the roof to look for the man. Meanwhile, the storm passes above Tom and Danny, and the upper floor collapses onto Tom. Back in the restaurant, Charlie looks for alcohol to sterilize the equipment to stitch up Maggie, but the dog owner reaches through an opening and grabs Charlie and takes her away. Miles comes back from the roof and learns about the incident. Realizing that the dog owner could be dangerous, Miles cuts Nate free and the pair go after Charlie. In the meantime, Tom is trapped under the wreckage after the floor fell on him. He manipulates Danny into helping him and gets saved just before he would have been crushed by a beam. Once free, Tom immediately holds Danny against the wall and rearrests him. The dog owner who introduces himself as Ray Kinsey has Charlie tied up in his makeshift apartment. He tells her that people like Charlie and her group looted his family just after the blackout, killing her daughter. Just then, Charlie hears Nate's voice and calls for help but Kinsey duct tapes her mouth. He then sets up a crossbow that will go off directly toward Charlie if someone opens the door. Kinsey leaves and encounters Miles and Nate in a corridor. Miles instantly kills him and opens the door to Kinsey's room. Charlie luckily moves out of the way just as the arrow flies right towards her and plunges into a chair. The trio return to the hideout to find that Maggie has lost too much blood. At her last minute, Maggie asks for her phone and remembers her children's picture that used to be on it and smiles as she dies. Charlie cries that everybody leaves her. Miles hugs his niece and tells her that he won't leave her. Tom and his men house in an old bank in Noblesville, Indiana. He stages a boxing match with his men before knocking down Danny. Tom then flashes back to the day of the blackout. It turns out that Tom used to be an insurance adjuster. He was fired by his boss for trying to help out some needy people. Miles and the group walk through the woods after Maggie's burial. Just then, the group hears a whistling sound and when they run towards it, they find themselves on the outskirts of Noblesville. They see a steam train getting ready for its maiden voyage. They learn that the train is scheduled to depart first thing in the morning. Meanwhile in Philadelphia, Monroe tells Rachel that her son Danny will be on that train. Miles and the group hide in an old garage. Miles is certain Tom intends to put Danny on the train and is keeping him somewhere in Noblesville, leaving Aaron to guard Nate who is locked in a cage. Miles, Charlie, and Nora take off to find Danny. It turns out that Tom has Danny caged in a vault of the old bank. 
Tom starts telling his blackout story to Danny. The series flashes back once again on the day of the blackout, when Neville returns home after being fired. He finds his neighbor Rob having a loud party. He then greets his young son Jason and wife Julia before retreating to the basement. There, he ferociously starts punching a bag. When Jason follows his dad downstairs, that is when the light goes out. Meanwhile, Nora spies a bookstore with three scratches on the window. Once inside, she says she's looking for a Joe Biden biography. The store owner Hutch takes her into the back room and immediately holds a knife to her throat, asking to see her rebel tattoo. He wants to make sure she is a legit rebel against the Monroe Republic since he's all that's left of Noblesville's underground rebels. After his wife's death, Nora corrects him, now it's the two of them, and they join hands to blow up the train. On the other side of the street, Charlie bumps into Tom, who introduces himself to her. She lies that she's spying on her boyfriend, who might be cheating on her. Later on, after realizing Charlie is Danny's sister, Tom ambushes Charlie. Thankfully, Miles arrives at the scene and has his knife to Tom's throat. He then urges Charlie to run off. Miles wants Tom to hand over Danny in exchange for Nate but Tom won't budge. It's not long before Miles spots several militia soldiers running toward them, so he flips Tom to the ground before running off. Back at the garage, Nate catches Aaron's pendant when it mistakenly falls off. Aaron claims that it belonged to his wife, so Nate gives it back without question. Just then, Nora runs in with Hutch, telling Aaron that she's blowing up the train, even if Danny is on board. If Charlie and Miles want to save Danny's life, they will have to find him before the train departs. After his encounter with Miles and Charlie, Tom takes Danny out of the bank vault. He then flashes back to the days when he and Julia made plans to leave the city after the blackout. Hearing a crash downstairs, Tom finds his neighbor Rob stealing food. While Jason and Julia watch, Rob attacks Tom, who doesn't fight back, until he finally breaks, beating Rob to death. Meanwhile, Charlie and Miles return to the garage and learn about Nora's plans. With nowhere left to turn, Miles draws his sword towards Nate in a fit of rage. It prompts Nate to escape, even if he is handcuffed. At Independence Hall, Colonel John Faber reports to Monroe that the Georgia Federation has joined hands with the Plains Nation, and they are marching troops along Monroe's borders. Monroe wishes he had one Black Hawk helicopter so that his enemies would kneel, and bow, entire North America would be his to rule. Back in Indiana, Nora constructs a bomb and plans to hide it in on the train's log pile, so when it gets tossed onto the fire, it will be ignited. On the other side of the town, Aaron, Danny, and Charlie enter the old bank, only to find that they've just missed Danny. The group hears the train's whistle and runs for it. It turns out that Tom wants to depart right now after the encounter with Miles. Watching the train depart, Nora suddenly has a change of heart. When she tells Hutch that she's about to remove the bomb, Hutch stabs her in the abdomen. A while later, Miles and the others find Nora clutching her stab wound. Leaving Aaron to tend to Nora, Charlie and Miles get some horses and hop on board the moving train. While Miles gets through the guards to remove the bomb, Charlie spies through a window to find Danny. Danny sees his sister and attacks Tom. Charlie manages to get in and threatens Tom with a knife. Unfortunately, the captain quickly gains the upper hand and begins choking her. Charlie struggles for a while and runs off, only to be caught by Nate. As Tom holds Danny at gunpoint, Nate surprisingly frees Charlie off the train by throwing her off, instead of obeying Tom's orders to hand her in. Meanwhile, Miles manages to throw the bomb off the train and when he sees Charlie hitting the ground, he too jumps off the train. Miles and Charlie reunite with Aaron and Nora, who aren't faring too well. In the next scene, Tom and his men arrive at the destination, and his wife Julia rushes to see her husband and their son. At this moment, we realize that Nate is actually Jason Neville, Julia, and Tom Neville's son. Meanwhile, Rachel watches from her locked room when a handcuffed Danny is brought into the building. Rachel makes a quick drawing of a silver pendant and shows it to Monroe. She explains that Ben was a project lead to undo the blackout. If Monroe wants to turn the power back on, it starts with the pendants, and there are 12 of them. Elsewhere, Nora's stab wound is worsening. Realizing her condition, the group head for the only place Miles thinks he can get help. Meanwhile, Aaron flashes back to the night of the blackout. He and his wife Priscilla are celebrating their anniversary in a limo. Suddenly the power goes off and the limo abruptly stops and gets hit by a huge truck. At present, Tom finally delivers Danny to Monroe. Monroe tells him that since he knew Ben personally, Tom will be held accountable for his death. But satisfied with his work, Monroe promotes Tom to Major, asking him to lead the intelligence and interrogation section. Miles and crew arrive at a mansion surrounded by soldiers. Miles demands to see a Drexel. The soldiers aren't so friendly so they immediately cock their refiles toward the group. Just then, Drexel comes storming outside with a gun in hand. He then forces Miles and Aaron to their knees, with plans to shoot Miles first. Drexel cracks a smile. It turns out he was just fooling around. 
Drexel then ushers the group into the house. Nora is quickly taken to the doctor while the rest are offered private rooms, baths, and wine. The mansion is shockingly luxurious, thanks to Drexel's heroin business. Meanwhile, Aaron flashes back to two months after the blackout. His wife is deathly ill from dysentery. A stranger comes out of the shadows to introduce himself as Sean and offers clean water. At present, while Miles goes to the infirmary to donate blood to Nora, Charlie is submerged in a tub. Haunted by a series of flashbacks losing her mother and father, losing Maggie, getting so close, but losing Danny too. Back in Philadelphia, Nate marches into Monroe's office where Monroe hands him the sketch Rachel drew of the pendant. Nate immediately recognizes it, and tells him that Aaron has it. When Jason hears Monroe is sending Sergeant Strasser after the group, he panics as Strasser doesn't leave anyone alive. Back at the mansion, Drexel wants something in return for aiding Nora. He wants to kill an Irish family next door, the O'Hallorans, who ruined his heroin business. However, Drexel wants Charlie to do the killing, instead of Miles. Fearing for his niece's life, Miles protests but Charlie agrees to do it, or else Drexel will murder them all. When Charlie is ready, Drexel gives her a long needle, which she'll later stick into the head of the O'Halloran's family, Bill O'Halloran's eye. Drexel then tells Charlie to pretend to be one of his girls, who is seeking revenge on him. Meanwhile, Aaron flashes back once again. A group of bandits attacks him and Priscilla. Priscilla is captured, and Aaron gets beaten up. Thankfully, Sean steps in to save the day, killing the bandits. Though Aaron is a big guy, he realizes that he can't protect his wife. At present, Miles realizes Charlie cannot come out alive of O'Halloran's house even if she manages to kill Bill. He takes care of Drexel's men and gets out of the house. Meanwhile, Charlie plays her part well enough to earn an audience with Bill in his private room. Once they're alone, Bill begins telling Charlie the story of his daughter Rebecca. Hoping for a more glamorous life, she ran off to Drexel's but wound up murdered. This is why Bill wants revenge on Drexel. Back in the mansion, Aaron gets caught trying to plan an escape and is thrown into a circle of guards. Drexel orders an unconscious Nora to be dragged and brought to the scene. Nora then gets treated with an adrenaline injection, after which she regains her normal posture. Drexel wants Nora and Aaron to shoot one another. Next door, while Bill is distracted, Charlie reaches for a knife and readies to pounce, but Bill's too quick to notice and grabs it out of her hand. Luckily, Charlie gets a hold of a kettle and knocks Bill out. Moments later, she begs forgiveness for what she's about to do. She raises the knife to strike, but Miles grabs it out of her hand at the last second. At Drexel's mansion, Nora and Aaron refuse to shoot each other. Hopelessly, Aaron instructs Nora to shoot him. Nora clearly refuses, so Aaron shoots himself. However, a second later, Aaron pops up and shoots Drexel in the chest. It turns out that Aaron used a flask to save himself from the bullet. Shocked that their leader is dead, Drexel's soldiers let Aaron and Nora go. The pair then meet up with Charlie and Miles outside in the street. Aaron has a final flashback to when he left Priscilla, leaving his wedding ring and a note behind at their campsite. The note read that she would be better off without him. In Philadelphia, Danny finally meets his supposedly dead mother. Rachel weepingly embraces her son. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.